Dr. Perry Hoffman with the National Education Alliance for Borderline Personality Disorders made this observation, and I thought it was really interesting. She said, this is one of the disorders that really needs an interpersonal relationship to express itself most of the time. You could take a schizophrenic, for example, and parachute them on to a deserted island alone, and you would still observe their schizophrenic behavior. Let's say they had auditory or visual hallucinations. They would still have them on a deserted island by themselves. And you would be able to observe and see that if you had hidden cameras and you were monitoring them. The borderline personality disorder, you might not see nearly as readily because it's so relationship dependent. It's based on how they interact with other people, and there's nobody there to interact with it wouldn't be as obvious. Now, there is disturbance of identity of self, so there might still be evidence in the fact that they didn't know who they were as clearly. They didn't have a clear, well-defined self-image, but that would be pretty internal, and so you wouldn't see it as obviously. But I thought Dr. Hoffman had a great observation when she said, this is one of those disorders that's relationship-dependent. You have to be in a relationship for it to fully manifest itself. So you might have someone that you're observing in your life, and if they're not in a relationship, maybe they're in IT, they're working in computers or something, and you don't observe them in a relationship, these things might not pop out until you start interacting with them or you start observing them in a relationship with somebody else. Now. I want to talk about some of the myths. I want to clear some of those things up. And then I want to talk to you about how to live with these people and how to cope with these people. One of the myths that I hear a lot is that if somebody has a borderline personality, then they've been victimized as a child, that they were victims of child abuse. That's not true. There is a high incidence of child abuse with borderline personality disorders, but the research tells us that it's more likely a combination of environmental factors, including childhood trauma. There may have been childhood trauma, but there are also biological factors and there are also social factors. So it's not just that they were abused as a child that sets them up for borderline personality. There are other things that contribute to it as well. So it's not just that. And everyone that suffered childhood abuse doesn't become a borderline personality disorder. So neither is true. Not all borderline personality disorders were abused as a child, and not all people that were abused as children become borderline personality disorders. So there's not a one-to-one connection between the two. Again, it seems to be a combination of factors, and there is a biological genetic factor there, too. You can be more at risk if somebody in your family has suffered from the disorder as well. So it's not as simple as just, was this person abused as a child? So don't jump to that conclusion. One of the other myths. And this has been around a long time, and there are even some statistics to support it, but the statistics are misleading. And that is that this shows up only in women or much, much more frequently in women than it does in men. But when you do careful study, the results show that it's about equal between men and women. Now, most of the research is based on the psychiatric population, and more women present for treatment than do men, and men are oftentimes diagnosed as having something else wrong with them. Men are often misdiagnosed as having depression or PTSD rather than borderline personality disorder. So there's an Overrepresentation of women in the psychiatric population, 
not because there are more women that have psychiatric disorders, just they tend to present for treatment more, whereas men tend to be more stoic and resist treatment more. So they don't present themselves to be diagnosed. And then when they do present themselves, they are more frequently misdiagnosed for the comorbid things that show up with borderline personality. So don't anybody tell you now this is just women. If you're dating someone or you have a man in your life, brother, husband, father, you know, some relative or coworker or whatever that's a man, and you think, boy, I tell you, I, he sure seems to have all the characteristics or many of them, you may be exactly right because this isn't just women. It's about 50-50 between men and women. The third myth I want to talk about is this is not treatable. That's wrong. It is treatable. I mentioned last week that Dr. Linehan, who's one of the leading experts in borderline personality disorder, made the comment, if you ever show up, I'm paraphrasing her now, if you ever show up in the emergency room and you have the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder, don't mention it because there's more stigma associated with borderline personality disorder than almost anything else. And if you tell some ER intern that you have borderline personality disorder, they're likely to go, oh, okay, I get it, and write you off and not take seriously what you have to say because they know that you're impulsive. They know that you dramatize. They know that you take everything so personally and over-exaggerate, so they're going to discount the things that you say. It's like the little boy that cried wolf. They're not going to listen to you when you have something really wrong with you. So she wasn't kidding when she said you probably don't want to lead with that or you might not get taken very seriously because people think it's a very serious disorder and one that you can't really help that these people don't get better. And that's not true. It is treatable. And I've had a lot of questions from people that felt like they were raised by a parent that had a borderline personality disorder. They just had a lot of questions about how does this affect me if I've been raised by someone like that? Have I been programmed? You know, Dr. Phil, you said it wasn't just childhood trauma. It was also biological. Am I genetically programmed to have this? What have they done to me by me being raised by someone that has these traits and characteristics that you've been describing? What do I need to watch for? Am I likely to pass this along to my own kids? How do I stop this generational thing? There's a Dr. Cynthia Newman that's done a lot of research on how children of borderline personality disorders need to cope and what they need to watch for. Borderline personality disorder parents are often threatened by their very own children. And borderline personalities have a defense mechanism called splitting. It's a defense mechanism where they tend to see things black or white. There's no middle ground. It's called splitting. You can look it up and read about it. It's very interesting. But they put things in two categories. And remember, I said these people live in the emotional extremes. So if you're dealing with a borderline personality, one of their defense mechanisms is to categorize things in black or white. It's either all good or all bad. That's a way that they decide whether something is okay or it's not okay, and they write it off accordingly. And if they put you in the all bad category, you get written off. And they do that with their children. They could have one child that they decide is all good and the other child is all bad. And if you're the all bad, then you can feel written off by your parent. And the reason is you were. You were written off by your parent because they put you in that category. 
And that's going to damage your self-worth. It's going to damage your self-esteem. You're not going to feel appreciated. Now, being raised by this kind of parent can cause the child to become anxious, confused, fearful, and untrusting. Why? Because their parent's not predictable. They think, okay, one minute the parent is all happy and loving, and it can be 15 minutes and they're in there raging at them or blaming them for everything that they, the parent, are feeling or everything that's going wrong in the parent's life, they're blaming on the child. And so the child is confused. It's like, what the hell just happened? What did I do? Why am I causing my parent so much anguish here? And I I know it's me because they told me it was. So if they're splitting and put you in the all bad category and then they're in there telling you how you're to blame for all the ills in their life, then you come out feeling a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and really damaged in your personal truth. Your personal truth, what you believe about yourself at the core of your soul, the core of your being, has taken a real beating. And so that means you're very likely to see the world as a threatening place. You're very likely to feel hopelessly lost. And children of borderline personalities feel like they have to separate from their parent in order to survive. And guess what? (laughs) You're right. You need to get away from that kind of programming, that kind of input, that kind of battering that kind of emotional abuse, the sooner you can get away from that and get into a safe, nurturing place, the better off you are. 